On permanent style, we emphasize not just investing money in buying good quality clothing, but also investing the time in understanding how to look after your clothes well so you get the most out of them. In this series, with a campaign for wool, we're looking at how to look after wool clothing, tailoring, knitwear, by doing a few little jobs and things you can do at home, like sewing on a button, repairing a trouser hem, so that you can keep that clothing going and also mean you can do your own repairs when you're traveling or away from home, when you can't take something to a professional immediately. In this first video, we're gonna look at sewing on a button. Now, what we're gonna do here is perhaps the most in-depth video you've ever seen on sewing on a button. Uh, we're using and talking to the cut of Ben Clark, and he's gonna show us how a Savaro Taylor sews on a button first, the most thorough, the most professional way you could do it with every possible uh, piece of equipment you could possibly have. We'll then say how an amateur or one of readers, myself, could do that kind of sewing at home and which things are really required, which things you don't really need. And then finally, we'll look at what you do if you're out and suddenly notice a button's come loose and how you quickly reinforce that button before you can then replace it fully later. It's interesting, you'll see the video in a second when I talk to Ben, I mean, I have must have replaced or sewn on dozens of buttons in my time, but I've never actually thought to ask a Savile Row tailor about how they sew on a button. And even though most of the things that Ben talks about are things I do already, there are little things that I've learned for the first time, things like the way he puts his fingers underneath the button to work out the level of the shank above the cloth, or also how he realizes or bears in mind the fact that the shank will become smaller over time as he tightens the button. And I think a nice thing about a video like this is, no matter how many times you've done it yourself, there'll be little things you want to pick up and improve your technique. So let's see what Ben and I have to talk about. Let's start by talking about materials. So what have you got with you and would you normally require to sew on a button onto a jacket? So obviously um, you need a button. Yeah. Uh, we traditionally use horn buttons and a four hole horn button. Okay. Some people use a two. Is two s s less weak, less, less strong than a four? Exactly, yeah. The perceived wisdom is that four, four button hole is it's slightly stronger. Stri slightly stronger, yeah. So in exactly. the long term, if you have a two hole button, it might be slightly more likely to come loose. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Just that simple. Yeah. Uh, also, we need, uh, obviously, uh, some thread. We use quite a specific thread for doing buttons. Uh, this is a, it's a polyester core with a cotton spun exterior to it. But I guess the polyester it makes it kind of stronger a little bit. So that's, the, yeah, so you've got the strength of the polyester, but mm -hmm. the thing with polyester is because this can get quite a lot of heat, either through going through the cloth repeatedly, yeah. or even actually putting the iron on it. So if it's just polyester, it can get very hot, so the cotton kind of gives it that little bit of a... And protection as well. Exactly, yeah. okay. It just makes it go through a little bit smoother. Do people ever use silk yarn? I think seem to think people used to not, use silk. Yeah, they did. Thing. Not anymore. I mean, it's, it's, it's very expensive, mm. and polyester is actually sort of stronger. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it has, it has its drawbacks. Yeah. So, I mean, I think there are very few areas that uh, we would use anything made from polyester. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I think we kind of relaxed a little bit with the, the polyester core on this thread. <laughs> okay. Um, so, we would use that. That would be doubled up. And then, I mean, I'll show you that uh, as we go on. Mm. It, will be, it will be doubled up and passed through beeswax. Okay. And then spun. Again, there are lots of different ways of doing that. I do it. I spin it around my finger. It's okay. kind of make it into a unified piece of thread. And then we sew with that. Why the beeswax? Um, what is that? Again, it, what that does is that it, it will make, so it's, you're doubling up the, 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 the thread, mm -hmm. and then you're putting the beeswax on, which is gonna give it a little bit of a sticky kind okay. of feel to it. Yeah. I'll then just get rid of the excess beeswax. And then I would normally pass it, just the iron over it, and then okay. twist it, and Does then it melt the wax there, a or? little bit, and it will just turn the, the two threads oh, into, into one. Ah, okay, fine. Yeah, Okay. that's the idea. Great, well show us how, that, how that's done then, with okay. the thread. Should we get straight on with that? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so like I say, you're doubling up. So I'm using a 05 sharp needle. Okay. Um, as long as it's a needle. Uh, you want something that, because this is slightly thicker thread, this cotton uh, here, so you obviously want one that's, you're gonna be able to pass it through the needle. Mm -hmm. So I can do this, my eyesight is not what it used to be. <laughs> um, right, uh, so we've, we've doubled up the cotton. Yeah. Um, let me just get that back in the right place. 
I'll double that up. And then I'm just passing it through. I mean, like, like I say, you know, there are so many different ways of doing this. I'm sure you've got other, other people you know, who, who do it differently. This is just how I do it, and it seems to work. So you can already see that. It's sticking those two pieces together. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then I get rid of just the excess of it. Just with a piece of, just with a piece of tailoring cloth. cloth. Yeah. Okay. And then what I do is I coil it like this. And again, you can, I don't know if you can see so that. That's sort of twisting it together. It's twisting it so it yeah. comes like a piece of rope. Yeah, so you're basically just twisting the end. Yeah, so until the whole it gets like nice and taut hmm. like that. And then I'll just... How did you know how it. much thread to take, by the way? Is that any way to guess? Are you just guessing or are you... It's, you know, most, most of the time you're kind of, yeah, it's, it's, through, it's through just practice. I mean, obviously, on the cuff button... You use the same bit of thread to, to do all, all of them. Yeah. Um, so you might need a little bit more. The, the, the danger with doing this is that if it's too long, mm. it's going to not. Mm. Uh, you may well see this. And it's very easy. Now it's got this sort of slight sort of sticky element to it. Yeah. Uh, it, it can actually make it sort of knot a bit more easily as well. Okay. So you just have but to that's sort of be aware. That's about a foot or just over a foot of thread when it's doubled up. It's yeah. Been using for a single button. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What I would probably do is if I, so this one is a, is a one button, if it's two, that would probably do two buttons. Okay. Okay. So I'll right. just sort of tie it off, knot it again, and then and do then the do second again. one. Fine. Okay. So about half of that for a single button, roughly. Yeah. Okay. So I use just the bottom as, as God, yeah. as they say. Okay. And so I just make sure that all lines that up. it's all lining up. And then, I mean, it, the old school way is you get your chalk and you mark and through just, the buttonhole. You're just scratching a little bit of chalk okay. off the, and then you're lifting it back and marking it. Huh. And you can okay. see that it's lining up yeah. perfectly with the marks. I just, these, these are great, these. Mm. It's just a chalk, piece of chalk, pencil. Okay. And you don't have to do all that. You can just go straight through the button. Yeah. Buttonhole. Okay. Get rid of all those just little bits of okay. chalk. So, so that's that. So you've got your place marked then. So you know that, yeah. Again, on your on your pattern, you'll have you know what button stand you want. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mean button stand? You mean how far away from the edge of the button? Exactly. Is? How way, how far back from the front edge here? Yeah. You want your button standard is about half an inch to five eighths. Some okay. people have bigger. Some people have uh, less. I know that Huntsman back in the day with Colin Hammock used to have very very small front edges. So you have less of an overlap and you less of an over angles going down. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Okay. Uh, that's a matter of personal taste. It is quite a handy tip that if you, seeing as you, you know, we're talking about buttons coming, one of the reasons why a button might come off is that, it's happened to us all, you've maybe put on a little bit of extra timber. Um, You're pushing you, it that a bit more? Yes, uh, you can, you know, you can bring the button into that. It's quite a, a neat little trick of giving you just a little yeah, bit of I extra see. room. Yeah. Without okay. having to t take it to a tailor and take side seams out or anything. Mm, that's a good point. I mean, it's not much, but on the double, you know, that's half an inch. You're probably going to get even even three quarters, maybe. Mm. Again, this is you know there are, there are lots of different ways to do this. This is this is just my way. I start off on my mark. Yeah. And just get that set and get your. You don't want it to pull. You don't want to start pulling the fabric. That's not going through all of the layers. That's just going just through on the top, top of the moment. Yeah. yeah and then through my button. Now, some people, they talk about, you know, the shank, which is the distance the button. So it sits all, above the cloth, right? Yeah, exactly. It just means that it's easier to undo your jacket and do it up. Um, where I've heard story, you know, you're putting a match stick under there or something under there to kind of get the distance you want. Yeah, I was thinking of that, because sometimes when I've done a button myself, I'm not quite sure how big that shank should be and how far apart. I guess it's, it's roughly the thickness of the cloth itself, isn't it? Because that's got to, got to sit under the button on the other yeah, side. Yeah, and, a, and a little bit extra. But what you've got okay. to remember is once you've passed the, I mean, I'll show you. Once you've passed the, the, the up and down the needle, uh, I'm obviously just going down through the hole. I go all the way through. Yeah. Now I'm going to hold it to about there. Now the shank, is going to be less than that because but by the time you've gone up and down and up and down and then you're, you wrap, you're going to wrap the, the cotton around the shank, it's going to, it's going going to, to drag it smaller. down, it's okay. going to shrink. So you're, so, so you're initially holding it, what's that, half an inch or something away yeah, from... I mean, even three quarters. Okay. Um, and 
then that just goes back through. Whether you want to go through the same holes again or do the opposite holes is up to you. Well, out of interest, when you first started, why did you do that first stitch on the surface of the cloth rather than doing it on the underside and then kind of coming through? Then you're going to have the knot. And then the knot's going to be on there. The knot's going to just show there, which fine. is okay. just a bit... Less attractive. Just, yeah. Okay, fine. I mean, there's going to be a knot on the back here to a degree because you're going through. So you're yeah. going to see the thread. But it would and be lumpier if the knot was there. Exactly. Yeah. So that's quite a good... I kind of, when you I get to the stage... underneath. Okay. I kind of get, to, get it to about there. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the first one is on the surface, um, just to kind of root the thread yep. with the knot, and then you're going back and forth through the cloth to the other side, kind yep. of all the way through the cloth. Yep. Now, some people I know don't go all the way through to the cloth on the other side, do yep. they? Why, no. why, why is that? Uh, it's a, so, I mean, it's a, it's a visual thing, I suppose. I mean, it's, it's easier and quicker to put it on just on the top layer because you're just going to be doing stitches like this. And, okay. you know, if you're kind of in a more of a... a, a factory-based production, then that's going to save you time. Um, and also, it's not going to matter really on here because you you got know, such a pattern, we've got a such a pattern. See. But okay. you know, if that were a plain cloth and a, a quite light plain cloth, um, you know, you're going to you're going to see it more. You're going to see the, the, the thread on the other side. Okay. Yeah. So, it's, so it's an aesthetic choice to a certain extent as to whether you want to see the thread on the other side as well. Yeah. I mean, this is stronger. Okay. I mean, the, the main reason why we go all the way through is that it's, it's going to really hold. Okay. Um, you're, you're also not going to have the, the, the dangly element um, because you, I suppose it's, you know, it's balance, isn't it? If you've got the thread coming through here, and this is why on overcoats, they sometimes have a, a little mini, button, a little mini button there. Yeah. If you've got a heavy button, it's going to loll around a bit more. If you've got a heavy button and you've also got quite a big stand on the, on the button yeah. because you've got a thick cloth, so it's got to be quite a big stand to go through the extra layer of cloth. Mm. When it's undone, it can kind of okay. flop around a bit. Right. Whereas if you've got a, a, a button on the back there to stabilize it, it's, it's traveling a little bit further. So it's, okay. it's, it's got a little got bit of a balance. Of a, yeah. Or like a root of a tree almost going through the other side. Exactly. Fine. So okay. it's the same principle with this. I've done a cross, crisscross on there. I've done two passes through. So two, two, on, sets. two across to one side, two on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And pass that back down. And, and, so, what, and so you've done a, why have you done a cross on top rather than, for example, two parallel lines? Well, I mean, I, I just think it looks, it looks nice. I think it's probably a bit, it's all strength. Uh, you know, I mean, I think it's probably a bit stronger. Also, you've now got these naturally, these these are crossing, the, the, the thread is crossing here. So when you come up, okay. yeah. it's naturally crossing through here. So, so the when threads you, underneath aren't sitting in two sections of the uh, two parallel lines. Exactly. So when okay. you're up here, they're in a bit more of a bunch. You can see them kind of crossing. Okay. In more twisted there. underneath. Yeah. Oh, so wait, when were, you, you, were you saying that you once had three different cutters have an argument about which was the yeah. best way to do it? Yeah. And it's not even the most bizarre thing that they had an argument about. Yeah. I mean, um, <laughs> Well, so each of those three cutters thought that their method a, was right. Had a very specific way of, of, of doing it. Huh. Um, well, so one liked to cross, one liked to parallel, one was like... Which? One would only use a two button, a okay. two hold, sorry. Okay. Uh, one would go one cross and then do the other cross and okay. then go back. The other one did two crosses the same direction and two crosses the other direction. Okay, right. And, I yeah, guess if anything, quite... that, that shows the fact that the fact they all thought they were right, yeah. and clearly over time neither have been proved to be completely wrong. Yeah. Means there's not much difference really between not really. the different ones. Yeah. No. Okay. No. Okay. So you've done your cross. You've done two either way on the top. Okay. And that's you would never do more than that. That's strong enough, pretty much, with that kind of thread uh, and double. I mean, I, yeah. I mean, you don't want to get this great big lumpy thing in the middle. On top of it. Yeah. I mean, okay. that's the. Um, some you can do more. Some mm. people do more. I, in my experience, that, that usually does the trick. Okay. And then once you've, you've, you've gone back down and then back up and you're just coming through Yeah, at the come base. up again, yeah. And then when you get to this stage... And you're you winding around, wind it around to create that shank or stand uh, exactly. underneath. And this is where I kind of go a bit overboard sometimes. But How many this times is, roughly do you think you go around? I, I just kind of... I just keep going until it kind of feels... <laughs> <laughs> Did it feel strong enough? Until it feels about right. So that's now standing up kind okay. of nicely on its own. And then I'm just going to pass the needle through there. Yeah. So I've, I've, I'm just now 
just sewing through the yeah. shank. And then I get part of the, the cloth and I just pass it over the needle. And this is just sort of sealing it. This sort of knots it up. Just gives it an extra bit of rigidity and I just do that a couple of times. Okay, so you put the, the so needle through, through the shank. The, yeah, and, and then, then I'm then passing that bit over there like that. It's almost like a basket. Okay, I guess that's, uh, that's creating a little, a little knot, isn't it? So you're taking stitch. part of yeah. that, so you, you put it through, you've created a loop at the back there where you put through, you take part of that loop and you put it around the front of the needle. Yeah, I mean, it's sort it of like you would, the sort of stitch you would do on a buttonhole pretty much. Right. And that's it. And, and then, then just, you just, and just cut off fairly close yeah, to the shank. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I end it here. Some people I know come through and yeah. then do that same sort of basic stitch of the, you know, sort of, creating a knot in the stitch yeah. at the back okay. and, and cut it off on the back as well. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you then get a little bit of a, you know, bit of... A bit of more of a knot on the other side. Well, yes, and you get a bit of thread sort of hanging off sometimes. Ah, okay. I just find that a little bit neater. All, all the kind of knots are kind of done under there, so you're not going to see it. Okay. But there you go. Okay. And then that sort of... Then lines up with the other side. Yeah, and when it's done up, that should, you know, sit nicely. On there okay. without it sort of moving all over the place. Very nice. So we've gone through how a professional sews on a button, mm -hmm. uh, on a Savaro suit, the very top end of what you expect in terms of quality and time and everything else. Um, someone at home, one of the permanent style readers is just sewing on a button. How much of this kind of stuff do they need? I mean, do they need to use exactly the same thread, for example? No, no, not at all. I mean, the, the, the basic things you need, obviously you do need some thread to sew on the button. Yeah. Uh, as, as strong as it can be, but you know, whatever you happen to have around and the, the sort of things you get in just sort of general sewing kits yeah. is, is fine. Okay. Um, you obviously need something to break it with or cut it with, so some scissors, and you need a needle. Yeah. Um, I guess on the thread, I mean, that, the one you're using, it looks considerably thicker than what I would yeah. normally have at home. So yeah. uh, that's going to, something thinner is still going to be okay, maybe just not quite as strong where you want to go through a couple more times exactly. or something. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Just, just go through instead of going twice through, you know, so four times in total through, yeah. the, through the holes, maybe do, you know, eight, double it up. Yeah, okay. Um, but you're achieving pretty much the same thing that way. Yeah, it's, I mean, the, the thing that, I mean, this because of the, the dynamic of the, it's having the, the polyester core, which then spun with the cotton exterior, does make it very, very strong. Mm. Um, so it's, it's, this actual shank is less liable because that actually now feels really kind of, solid whereas something like this the shank isn't going to be quite as strong so that mm. might have more of a tendency to wear through yeah but the real real trick is is this of going through the hole on the back going through that yeah yeah because otherwise it's just the, the tension is just on this top bit of cloth yeah rather than the bottom top bit and the bottom and any kind of lining in between as well any yeah. canvas exactly yeah okay yeah because yeah, i guess so any yeah a lot of ready-to-wear things don't have that right a lot of ready-to-wear jackets are just sewn on the top layer of yeah. cloth a lot yeah. more flimsy and you know, best case is that, like the one we're going to see here, is that the the, the button starts to kind of the, the cotton gets a bit thin, mm. and the button starts to wobble around. But you know, it can actually rip oh, the material itself, the, the, the actual material itself, yeah. which um, okay. you know is less good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you to throw away the jacket over a buttonhole, More quite. Uh, or a button rather. Yeah. Um, now this jacket, um, I know you brought in, which is uh, interesting that. So here we've got a button which is just kind of coming loose. And I feel like this is actually more what people would happen, right? They're not just going to be looking down at, oh, my button's missing. It's going to be, oh, I notice it's coming loose. It's working off. So if you have a button in this situation, what would you do to try and repair that? So I think the key is sort of looking at the state of, of the cloth. Okay. So if it's just come away a bit. So if the cloth itself is torn or not, basically. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay. And then I think, I mean, if you normally... You're going to be on the train or something, aren't you? Or you're going to look down and go, "Oh my God!" Or someone's going to say, "Yeah." Oh yeah, and you're going to be in the office, or you're going to be you're going to be somewhere. So, you know, getting your scissors out and cutting that off and thread, you know, it's it's going to be. So I would probably, you know, most instances, just sew that back on as is. You kind of got you've got the mark. Okay. So if you had all the time is. in the world, you could cut the button off you and do exactly what you've off. done. Yeah, exactly. But if you've got ten minutes before a meeting or you're on the train. Yeah leave it as it is, yeah. and just go through a few more times to kind of bring it back down to yeah. the cloth. And okay. because this is a, this is a ready-to-wear garment, you can see it hasn't gone through on the other side. On the other side. Okay. I, would, I would go through. So if you go through, then you're actually giving it much more support yeah, than you had Yeah, and just before. give that, yeah, okay. exactly. And, and why, are we, why are we looking to see whether the cloth had torn Well, underneath? because even, even with sewing it back on, 
it, it might catch again. And then if it's if it's sort of ripping the cloth, yeah. If it gets if it catches again or something, it, it might just make that rip worse. Okay. So, so almost it's, if it's if it's ripping, you just want to not do anything, just leave it alone because you might make the cloth. Well, if it's basically. ripping, I'd, I'd yeah, I'd cut it off. Oh, then you would definitely cut it off. Yeah. Okay, fine. If it's ripping, I'd cut it off. Right. And just start start afresh. But like I say, you know that that might not be. You might not want to go into the most important meeting in your life with a button missing. You know. What I mean? <laughs> so yeah. you know, I think just ultimately. You know, if you can just do a, a, a make, do, and mend job, yeah. just have a, just have a, that, that's all you need. You yeah. Know, um, you know, just basic thread, and just, and just again, and just a, secure it once. Go through the cloth completely. A yep. few times. Yeah. Up and down, up and down. Yeah. Then make a bit of a shank. And a bit of a shank, off. and then just tie it, tie it off, and uh, it should, it should be okay. Fantastic. Okay, great. Well, thanks so much. I think we've shown both the the full in-depth tailor for people out there who want to, you know, aspire to be work on Savile Row and do yeah. it themselves and do the full nine yards. Um, and then also just a quick patch job and also how someone could do it at home if they wanted to and yeah, even replace buttons if they wanted to do it on, on their own time. So yeah. that's fantastic. Thanks for your time, Ben. It's a pleasure. Yeah.